Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for George. One of the things that kids have to put up with is rules. Uh, they're not as bad as laws, because they don't really throw you in the slammer on rules, and they're not always written down somewhere. They're just rules. I was never very good at them. Well, I was good at breaking them. <laughs> but out of that, uh, outside of that, I wasn't too good with rules. I just didn't think they all made sense. Some of them seemed awfully dumb to me, rather arbitrary rules. Some of them were good. There were some good rules, no question. No running with the scissors. <laughs> That was one I never disobeyed. <laughs> Made sense to me. This will go right through me. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm not running with the scissors. <laughs> I was always sure of that. Another smart, good rule, I thought, was uh, no sticking your head out of the high-speed railroad train window. <laughs> hey, Dad, good rule. Doesn't want us to get our heads cut off. But they weren't all that good. Some of them were kind of dopey. Things like no singing at the table. What? No singing at the table. Why? One guy with a bad voice screwed it up for everybody else a hundred years ago? <laughs> no singing at the table. Why not? Because I said so. That was always a sign of a dumb rule. <laughs> because I said so. You could scream your head off at the table. That wasn't mentioned. <laughs> not in the room. <laughs> You could stand right near the table all during dinner and sing your head off. I'm standing near the table during dinner and I'm singing and it isn't even covered by your room. <laughs> Sit down, you. That was your middle name, you. <laughs> Another form of torture kids had to put up with Verbal cliches, lazy language on their parents' part. Parents have a way of saying the same thing the same way all the time. Well, I guess if you're going to have to tell somebody something 1,800 times a day, no sense in trying to involve your imagination in it. Say it over and over. Get down off there! You want to break your neck? Get down! You'll break your neck! He'll break his neck up the kitchen. Come over here, I'll break your neck if I see you up there. And pick up these toys. I nearly broke my neck coming in. That was the only injury I ever heard about. It's the only injury they ever mentioned. The worst one, broken neck. They never mentioned anything you might get. Get down off there, you'll sprain that ankle. Broken neck. And we never had them in my neighborhood. I never saw one. They just didn't happen. I wondered what they looked like, man. I wondered, where do you put the sling? That's why. I, I couldn't figure it out. You gotta hold it yourself. I, uh, I broke my neck. Could you, uh, hold this for a minute? Thanks, man. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you. The only other injury there ever was, the only injury besides that was a delightful little thing called putting someone's eye out. Put that stick away! Put that stick down! You want to put somebody's eye out? Mm -hmm. But we had answers for the cliches. We kids, we had answers for them. We didn't get to deliver them. Well, no sense getting beat up 14 times a day. We had answers for every cliche they had. Didn't matter what it was. Don't you understand English? Not fully, no. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? Six. <laughs> Oh, my, I thought you were looking for information. <laughs> Don't talk back to me. Huh? You're teaching me a language, aren't you? You're telling me no more practicing? <laughs> you just wait until your father gets home. Oh, great, that dude never comes home. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you.
And then they would tell you to go to your room as though it were a negative experience. But why did they give you the room in the first place if it's such a bad spot? Go to your room! Hey, that's where all my stuff is, yeah!